Well, it turns out that the Canadian government does in fact receive royalties on the lipid nanoparticle technology. It's actually an old technology, not specific to COVID injectables, and there doesn't appear to be any sort of conspiracy around it, despite the assertive claims running rampant on social media that say otherwise. Stay tuned and I will explain exactly what I have found. Tamara Ugolini here with Rebel News, and I admit I was very alarmed when I heard various claims online that the Canadian Prime Minister, that's our gracious leader, Justin Trudeau, had some sort of monopoly on the COVID injectables. It's a topic that has received a lot of attention, and it speaks volumes as to the integrity of our leader. When claims such as this can spread like wildfire online and are believable. See, the claim seems to originate mostly from a gentleman by the name of Dr. David Martin. He's chairman and CEO of MCAM, which is a global financial and analyst firm. Martin seems to have, at least in the instance of his company, focused in on the ethical use of intangible assets, such as patents. Martin has a bachelor in biology, psychology, and sports medicine, his master's in physiology, and a doctorate in sports medicine. While searching for tangible evidence on the claims he was making about Justin Trudeau, I came across the link that apparently has it all. It's a NASDAQ report, and that's an acronym for the National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotations, and it outlines companies' annual commissions. In this particular instance, this 138 page report is from 2018 and is from Arbutus Biopharma Corporation, which is based out of British Columbia, Canada. On page 92 under product development partnerships with the Canadian government, it states the following. The company entered into a Technology Partnerships Canada, that's TPC, agreement with the Canadian federal government on November 12th, 1999. Under this agreement, TPC agreed to fund 27% of the costs incurred by the company prior to March 31st, 2004, in the development of certain oligonucleotide product candidates up to a maximum contribution from TPC of 9,330,000 Canadian dollars. As of December 31st, 2018, a cumulative contribution of 3,702,000 Canadian dollars had been received and the company does not expect any further funding under this agreement. In return for the funding provided by TPC, the company agreed to pay royalties on the share of future licensing and product revenue, if any, that is received by the company on certain non-SIRNA oligonucleotide product candidates covered by the funding under the agreement. These royalties are payable until a certain cumulative payment amount is achieved or until a pre-specified date. Okay, so what is Technology Partnerships Canada and what are these royalties about? Technology Partnerships Canada was a special operating agency of Industry Canada with a mandate to provide funding support for strategic research and development and demonstration projects that produced economic, social and environmental benefits to Canadians. It was scrapped in 2006, but all ongoing and pre-existing contracted projects continue. So that means that Arbutus will continue to give the government royalties until it repays the amount that it originally borrowed, because if it didn't, then that means our Canadian taxpayer dollars went to a wasted initiative. Here I was able to dig up Arbutus and its original contribution date, which was when the company originally received funds, and it was on the 12th of November 1999 to which they were approved for a grant of, again, $9,329,912. Of that, they actually only used $3,701,570, and they had repaid a measly $14,445 as of May 1st, 2017. It appears the government stopped routinely updating the program's repayment status publicly. I don't know about you, but I want those royalties coming back to the Canadian taxpayer. But is there something here that I'm missing? David Martin does seem to know a lot about patents, so I wanted to reach out to him for comment and get some feedback. After all, I had reached out to him once before 
when I published my previous written piece debunking this rumor that, again, Justin Trudeau is directly profiting somehow from the sale of COVID vaccines, but sadly, he never responded. So I was able to find his personal email instead of his generic info MCAM one. And I wanted to ask David about some of his conspiracy claims against the Canadian government and specifically Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. I wanted to know how the Canadian government is responsible for the market pricing of lipid nanoparticle technology. And then I wanted to know how government grants should seek to reclaim funding expenses from companies. Should taxpayers instead foot the bill? Third, I wanted to know more about his alleged lawsuit. Case we file tomorrow is going to be a federal case and is going to challenge the designation of this experimental gene therapy using a spike protein platform as a vaccine, as it does not meet the legal definition under the 1986 Act of what a vaccine is. And so we are actually challenging the CMS. We're challenging all of the federal mandates associated with this injection. And we're challenging it on the basis that is in fact an experimental therapy. It is not a vaccine. Against the US federal government, had it been filed, and if there was maybe somewhere online that I could find the submission. And fourth, I had found that Dr. Martin faced actual conspiracy charges against him by the United States government in 2017, where he is accused of fraudulent deceit and trickery. And I wondered what the outcome of those charges and allegations were. But it appears as though he has blocked my email address, which is strange because we never communicated directly apart from, again, when I reached out to his generic MCAM info email address in mid-February. That email address goes through okay, but still, I did not hear back. It speaks to the ethical nature of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his cabinet when claims such as this can spread like wildfire online. Trudeau is the only sitting prime minister who has violated conflict of interest laws on two separate occasions and skirted it on others. The ethics commissioner found that Trudeau's 2016 taxpayer funded Christmas vacation to the island in the Bahamas owned by the Aga Khan, whose private helicopter he used to fly in, broke four sections of the conflict of interest act. The second was the SNC-Lavalin scandal that saw the resignation of two top Liberal staffers, Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott. Trudeau narrowly missed the WE Charity violation, and thanks to the sacrifice of both Philpott and Raybould, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has walked away from this gross misconduct, to put it lightly, with a slap on the wrist, crying that he's sorry and promises to never do it again until he does. Which is why this allegation that he holds this monopoly on COVID injections is a believable claim, but when searching for the evidence, seems to have no merit. If you can substantiate otherwise, please, I'm all ears, but I need more than hearsay. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini. As you know, Rebel News doesn't take handouts from the Justin Trudeau liberals like the other mainstream media state broadcasters. That's why we can critique and criticize and cover the stories that our viewers want to see and hear. To support this work and ensure that I'm able to continue to give you the other, often unreported, side of the story, please consider donating what you can to rebelinvestigates.com. Your donation helps us to stay afloat and ensure that I can keep up with the research costs. That website again is rebelinvestigates.com.